as I mentioned in the previous segment, there's an interesting phenomenon among Democrats ahead of the 2020 election. One of their fringe members proposes something really radical, and then they all rush in to support it in an effort to boost their own radical bona fides. From the Green New Deal, Medicare for All, and now we're on to reparations. People aren't starting out on the same base in terms of their ability to succeed. And so we have got to, to recognize that and give people the, a lift up. So you are for some type of... Yes, I am. I have long believed uh, that this country should resolve uh, its original sin of slavery and that one of the ways we should consider doing that is through reparations for people who are the descendants of slaves. We're pleased to be joined tonight by conservative author, documentary filmmaker, and senior fellow at the Hoover Institution and best-selling author, Shelby Steele. Um, Shelby, we have so much to get into tonight, but I want to start with this reparations push. I mean, we just got through infanticide with Dinesh D'Souza and former Planned Parenthood clinic worker, and that's where the Democrats are on that issue. And now it looks like one after the other they're going to come out for some type of reparations to, quote, resolve the issue of slavery. What's going on here? <laughs> well, I like the word resolve. Um, I, I, it's kind of unimaginable to me that you would have the hubris to think you could resolve slavery. Uh, and, and I think reparations generally is uh, that's the problem with it. It's this holding on to an idea of justice that's absolutely impossible. Not only is it impossible, but it's self-defeating because you have to continue to see yourself as a victim waiting around in life to be resurrected by the, the beneficence of the larger society, by white guilt. And once again, you put your fate in the hands of other people rather than yourself. I would like very much to think that I have the self-esteem, the dignity to reject even the most lavish reparations. Um, I, I, I have too much racial pride to consider such a thing. Keep your reparations. Uh, I, I, will, I will fight like every other man in, in, in the world, every other person in the world, uh, to get ahead, to make progress. Uh, but to cling to this idea is, is shameful. Let's talk about why, and, and everything from the Oscars to college campuses, that we've arrived at this place. And this is 50 years after the Civil Rights Act all sorts of uh, progress made. We have uh, uh, black CEOs, uh, multimillionaires, top at universities. Every aspect of life, we've seen great progress. So yet we're at a point where it's almost like there was no progress, there is no progress. And now white privilege, Shelby, is the, the rubric of the, of the moment. We've, we've had this privilege issue percolating, but now it's really taken root. What, you know, what do both white people and black people do when they're stuck in this conversation? It doesn't seem to go anywhere positive. Well, uh, that's right. It, 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 it's, it's cyclical. It doesn't, uh, there's no way out of it. Let's look at a term I've dealt with a lot, and it's white guilt. Um, and white guilt is not the feeling of guilt. White guilt is acting guiltily uh, because you are terrorized by being seen as a racist. Um, if to be seen as a racist in American life is a, uh, a terrible thing. It's ruinous to your, your career, to your life. Um, and so whites then are hungry for a way to prove that they're innocent of racism, that they're not racist. And this is where the trouble begins. We've had 60 years now of the, the federal government and institutions across society bending over backwards, supposedly dealing with the problem of race and inequality and, and so forth. Um, and, and 
again, whites taking the position, liberalism itself really is a response to our, our history of evil racism. Liberalism is going to sort of redeem us from that. But the, you know, the problem with that is that you steal the thunder of the people you're trying to help. You, you cut them off from the, the human part of themselves that wants to aspire, that wants to make a life no matter what. The, the part that, that is fearless, that wants to engage the world. Um, so to satisfy this guilt, this larger de yeah. in society, we end up facilitating uh, weakness in the very people we're trying to help. Uh, Shelby, they get also, weak, I also, weaker and weaker. Yeah, um, and, and it takes away th that drive, that initiative that I think we all innately have to improve ourselves regardless of where we are in life or even where we came from. But Shelby, I also want to get your response to this tired trope we've seen during Trump's presidency, and it's reared its head again two separate occasions just in the past 24 hours. Watch. Well, look, when you talk about his statement on that, when you talk about him calling African countries s whole countries, when you talk about him referring to immigrants as rapists and murderers, I don't think you can reach any other conclusion. So you definitely would, uh, would agree that he's a racist? I do, yes. I don't really think that the president sees black people as fully human. I don't think he sees us as having agency, intelligence, as noted by his comment about Spike. He, you know, he wishes he could read. There's always some subtle suggestion that black people need to catch up. Uh, your reaction to that, uh, Shelby? <laughs> well, I think this is part of uh, this is part of the politics uh, of the left. Uh, liberalism has to have a menace to fight against, to justify its claims on power. One of the things that they've obviously, they, they don't have many real problems to work with today. We don't have the racism that we used to have, for example. Uh, what came along as a kind of gift to them was Donald Trump, who could be built up into a huge menace. He is. Like he is an enemy of civilization itself, and we have to rally against him. We have to demand power in order to fight him. So Trump, in that sense, is the new racism. He justifies, without Trump, what do they have to fight against? Uh, racism has been pretty much nullified. Uh, and well, they so don't believe it's that. A part so of Shelby, the, the Shelby liberal... they don't believe that. No, no, they don't. You listen to Spike Lee at the Oscars, they, and we they, might as well. They believe be... that when they walk around the, when they walk around the world up and down the streets and go into this place. I, I grew up in segregation. I know what what that's really like. Uh, that's not a problem today. You can do it. Go anywhere you want. You can be anything you want to be. Uh, and when you say that, when you say that Trump is a racist. You are simply going, you're regressing. That's retrograde. That's yesterday. That's not, that's not today. Uh, and, and you're not helping anybody. You're just, the problem is that we, we have, as a people who were oppressed for three and a half centuries, we don't yet know how to deal with freedom. Freedom is far more of a problem in minority communities today than racism. Racism is that we, we're, we're calling back this old problem of racism to hide from our new problem of freedom. That's what we, we, we don't have a history that's a really of that. Interesting. Yeah, we that's had to really... deal with everything, but not that. Yeah. Shelby, uh, I mean, I could just talk so to you for I, an hour. Yeah, I, just, I, I literally could just talk to you for an hour about all these issues. And I, I hope everyone <laughs> in the country is listening to this right now. We've talked a lot on this show about solutions, how people can try to get ahead in their lives, inspirational stories, dead ends. We've all found them in our own lives. But you're giving us some common sense ideas about how to think about the challenges in front of us. And, uh, you know, Jesse Smollett, I mean, this case blew, I mean, this could have, this could have resulted in blocks being burned down in Chicago. If this thing yes. kept going right. and then it's found out to be a, mm -hmm. a hoax and at UCLA Shelby, not too far from you, you know, down the coast, UCLA students were actually saying, we still believe Jesse. That's how bad things have gotten. <laughs>
Shelby, this is Shelby denial. Steele, th <laughs> yeah, it's, it's total denial. Shelby, thank you so much for joining us. You don't do TV often, and we really hope you'll come back. Uh, just fascinating. Uh, thank you so much. And you're looking live at Hanoi, Vietnam, where President Trump is set to make his first appearance ahead of his second summit with Kim Jong-un. Any moment, we're going to take you there as soon as the president emerges.